What's up, Fungal Associates? Welcome to Completely Arbitrary, the podcast about trees and other related topics. I am one of your hosts. My name is Alex Croson, and of, of course, it's no surprise to anyone. I'm sitting across from Casey Clapp. Honestly, I was hoping you were going to say a random name. Yep, not going to be a surprise to anyone sitting next to Ralph Nader. <laughs> God, that would be Ralph? amazing. Can yeah. we get Nader on the pod? Wait a second, Alex. You think it would be amazing to get Ralph Nader on the podcast? <laughs> no, I don't know much about Ralph Nader's politics. He's, yeah. a, he's green, right? The Green Party? Yeah, he's the Green Party. Well, yeah. it was. I don't know if Net Ralph Nader is even still in politics I don't right know now. if Ralph Nader is even still alive. Let's go. Should we? No. <laughs> we'll let it. We'll let this happen. He'll we live can't forever. start the podcast that way. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, we have an announcement. Al Gore and Ralph Nader, they've both passed. We have another announcement. Casey and I will be running for joint mayor of Portland. Yes. 2027. I don't know how that's relevant to Ralph Nader and Al Gore. You realize they're national politicians. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just make sure. Oh, thanks for poking a hole in my anyway, bit. I really yeah, appreciate that. Honestly, everything was believable until you said that, Alex. Hey, Casey, isn't it kind of fun that, um, uh, t- to pivot really hard, <laughs> Isn't it kind of fun that we can now hear the theme song and all the musical stings yes. while we record? For those of you who don't know, Alex is a magician. Oh, yeah. And I has know. a bunch of buttons. And every <laughs> now and then he comes up to me and he says, Casey, look, look, look at this. And I'm like, what? And he presses the same button that he's pressed a hundred times. And it does something different. Uh, yeah. This time, now it is playing all of our stuff in our ears. So we can like kind of get into the vibe yeah also you say i'm a magician and i was gonna say uh yeah i can drop an mp3 onto a sampler <laughs> yeah uh, it's a magic button alex <laughs> you press those buttons 10 times for me and each time they're a different thing sometimes it's for your music sometimes it's this other thing well we're gonna bring them to tobin's book uh opening that's true and that well that's the magic of a sampler case yeah. so you can make it sound however you want it's stunning and right now i feel very happy to hear my own music for my own show on this. Yeah, it's, it feels, it feels really good. good. It kind of gets you in the in the zone, yeah, doesn't it? it really does. really well, does. Well, Casey, speaking of getting in the zone, we are back here in the present day post... We'll call, we'll call this era of our show uh, post-excellent adventure. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Everything before this was... I guess it was just an excellent adventure. Now we're more serious. Yeah, where where were you when Completely Arbitrary did Excellent Adventure? <laughs> yeah. Everybody remembers where they were when Everyone's they heard the news, remember. right? Yeah, they were like, well, I was tying my shoe in the store and uh, that came on. I was like, what? Oh my God. Yeah. So. When are they getting back to the normal format? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, well, they hated they hated all the all the editing, all the... Every, it sounded so written as if there was a script, which to be clear, there wasn't. No, it was just up. a live recorded adventure yeah. that we went on with Tobin yeah, Mitnick. on his magic stump. Yeah. Anyway. Wow, what a what a time it was to be alive and and here we are again in our wow. normal format. You know, I feel changed. I feel like I feel yeah. like we learned a lot. You don't come back from something like that not having changed. You sure don't, but as I say mm-hmm. now every episode, yeah. malice means evil. Okay. Well, shall we continue? Is that going on your headstone? It's going to go on my headstone. <laughs> yeah. And then you know what? Those sons of bitches are going to plant an apple tree right on top of me. <laughs> I'm going to be so uh, mad. It'll it'll be me, my friend. <laughs> Alex, honestly, I would love that. No way. I'm the, dying first, the, for sure. Yeah, the irony would be so good, though. <laughs> if you did live longer, uh, plant an apple tree on top of my grave. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant it would be ironic if I lived longer than you, and I oh. started to spiral into what that means. <laughs> what is he saying? No, I did not uh, mean that. It would be completely unironic. All right. Well, let's move on all from right, that morbid thought, Casey. Today, we are talking about a tree that we've had requested a few times. Yes. It's been, I feel like it's been in the hopper for a couple of years. It has, yeah. yeah. Um, it's one of the most common trees in fact it's a tree i've skipped over many times because it's like not nah, too easy oh really mm-hmm. yeah, yeah well uh, we are we are resting on our laurels this episode because we well, are talking about we are talking about the northern red oak <laughs> quercus rubra rubra yes rubra the color red i should say we're not resting on our laurels this is gonna be an extraordinary I, I episode i'll probably edit that out yo no don't please oh okay. uh i well okay so here's <clears> the question though Alex. well if we are really resting on our laurels we would be doing a laurel Oh, see, that's where we've messed up. That's that's so, how we get cheap. We're resting on no laurels right now. We're resting on oaks. We're resting on our acorns. Yes, exactly. Now, Alex, are you are you familiar with this tree? Um, listen, I don't want to preempt anything here, but I'm going to. All right. 
I'm not a big red oak guy. What? I like my white oaks. You like a white oak. You like yeah, the clipped. you like the oaks with the with the 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 lobes that are rounded. Yes. As opposed to the red oaks that have pointed. That's exactly why, Casey. I see. Not a pointed lobe guy. Wow. I say a lobe. I say a lobe must be lo- A lobe must be round. And that's part of my platform All as, right. as mayor yeah, okay. of Portland. <laughs> okay, as co-mayor of Portland. And I, on the yin to your yang, yes. will say, I, however, prefer a red oak because Dude. red oaks have pointy bristle tips. See, this is very fascinating. A little difference between you and me. Interesting. I think this also matches our, our body types and personalities. <laughs> what do you mean? Like we, <laughs> that you and I are yin and yang of all, sar- all sorts? I don't want to I don't want to um, embarrass you here. Wow. But it's yang. What? Yeah. Yang? Really? Yeah, it's yin, yin and yang. Yin and yang? I know because I've been... You're doing... Uh, r- researching uh, traditional Chinese medicine for the last two and a half weeks. All right. I think this is a good time to go to break, Alex. <laughs> a lifetime of experience. <laughs> I know that it's yang. I can't believe that. Yeah, I, it's true. I had no idea. Yeah. I always thought I was pronouncing it quite correctly. No. You weren't <laughs> yeah, very clearly and obvious. So you're a you're a red oak man. I'm a white oak man. Today is your episode. We're talking about the northern red oak. We're gonna do it. And I'm assuming that it 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 this thing before we go to break. Let's maybe set the scene. This is an oak that grows in the northeast of America. I'm feeling yes, okay. the northeast and actually just kind of east generally. Okay, but then again, uh, most of that area kind of is intermingled with lots of different things. Okay. This would be the more northern of the oak trees because there's also a southern red oak. Wow, Falcata. So in this case, we're just going to say yes, northern red oak. It is the more northern of all the red oaks that we have out there. Mm. Did you say focaccia? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Oh. I said falcata. Quercus focaccia. My, Quercus that's, focaccia. I need to get on that, Casey. Yeah, honestly, could you make that? Maybe like get some acorns, uh, leach them, roast them, turn them into a bit of a flower? Sure. You think you could make that into a focaccia? I'm not a baker, but I know somebody who could probably attack that. Could someone attack try that? that? Attempt that, excuse me. Yeah, honestly, I think it has to be attacked. It, I'm going to attack it when it's done baking, so <laughs> oh, put it in my mouth. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, we got to go on break. We'll be right back with more Completely Arbitrary, the Northern Red Oak Quercus Rubra, right after this. Welcome back to Completely Arbitrary. Today, we are talking the Northern Red Oak Quercus Rubra. The jewel of the East, as they say. They do say that. (laughs) Alex, nobody says that. Do you think you and I are are sort of like doubly Western centric because we're American Hmm. and we live in the Pacific Northwest? Um, And is this a problem? Uh, you know, I don't think so if, because we talk about a lot of things. So you're Western centric if that's all you see and that's all you talk about. Sure. So ideally not. Well, I don't know. Maybe we're not the ones to judge. Yeah. I think anybody with a, with a good, uh, with a good compass for these things would be yeah. like, yeah, these guys are. We try to, we try to talk about it. And I think we would be, if, uh, I think you'd be Western centric or whatever centric if you say, this is the only red oak. And then everyone else in the world is like, mm, we, we got a bunch of those over here. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. This just happens to be the one that grows over there. You right, know? right, right, right. I don't know. Well, maybe, it, maybe a topic for a, a Patreon or something. Yeah. It, we'll discuss our biases. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I would love to do that because it would just be a reason to steer into talking about conifers of the Pacific Northwest and nothing else. I mean, that, well, I, th- I feel like our show will eventually evolve into its purest form, which is just you and I talking about the Douglas for every episode. <laughs> every episode. Well, today we're going to talk about the third branch from the bottom on this Douglas fir. <laughs> One, wow. We missed a trick, Casey, doing a whole season about a singular tree. <laughs> just one tree. One specimen. Now, see, if there was a tree that was that interesting... I would do that. What is the most interesting tree? Yeah, like not the species, like a a literal example, an individual tree that equals the most interesting tree. We'll come see it. We'll We'll appraise it. We'll throw Dos Equis its way. (laughs) It'll be good. (laughs) Who are we kidding? It's probably already drinking a Dos Equis. Hey, you know know what today's today's, uh, tree would say? I don't always grow acorns, (laughs) but when I do, it's a mast year. (laughs) Is that what they say? (laughs) Casey, let's imagine that oh, you and I God. are walking through an eastern forest. Okay. Say, I really want to go to, lately I've really wanted to go to North Carolina. Oh, okay. Excuse yeah. me, South Carolina. And we come across some northern red oak. Casey. Yes, sir. Let's ID this tree. All right, Alex. So you don't need to be in 
anywhere in the eastern United States to see this tree. You can go to anywhere in Portland and pretty much point at a big tree. If it's a big tree that's not a Douglas fir, not a conifer of any kind, uh-huh. it's going to be the Western Red Cedar. Oh, my God. It's going to be What the a, fuck? It's going to be a Northern Red Oak. That was a snafu that Alex just edited out. <laughs> not a not an Oregon white oak. Not an Oregon white oak. Oregon white oaks are planted and they do grow here very wonderfully. Well, obviously. But in the city of Portland, the northern red oak. Uh-huh. And just to be clear, everyone, I am not going to get this wrong. I'm going to be northern red oak this whole time. <sighs> straight up. So you're walking through uh, South Carolina. You're in the mountains a little bit. And you see a tree. First thing that you're going to notice in the mountains and in the forest is that these trees are big, tall oak trees. Mm. Now, oak trees in the east are famous for growing up in forests. So they have a, a forested kind of appearance where they have one tall stem that grows up, but then at the top they spread out with all their big branches, oh, kind yeah. of creating uh, an umbrella that is like, it's more like a palm tree kind of umbrella is They're, the way I would describe sure. it. Sure. They're sort of columnar. They're not yeah. so much ovate. Everything is growing ovate? straight up. Ovate, yeah, kind of um, oval-like. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so here's the thing, Alex. If you're in Oregon, where we plant them in parks and street trees, they actually have a much wider, broader canopy. Mm-hmm. Some of the biggest ones in Portland have branches that start maybe about 10 or 12 feet and they're three feet in diameter and they just go <laughs> straight out at like i don't know is this like a 60 degree angle my arms uh, i don't know 45 uh-huh 50 yeah about a 60 degree angle yeah good job they just grow out and up and they get huge okay and i mean like not not like casually big i mean like oh my god that's a jar that's a gargantuan tree you know this uh one one of the bigger trees in our in our vicinity right now yeah. is this American beech down the road, or is it yes. a European uh, beech? European beech. Okay, yeah, yeah. it is a monster. It's huge. Yeah, are, is that how does that compare to your average northern red oak? Well, the same age, I would say the northern red oak will be much wider. It'll be the same height, oh. but it will have this giant spread. Okay. They just they just get massive. So that is the first thing you're going to see. It's got nice gray bark. The gray bark tends to have these long furrows that go vertically, mm-hmm. and they're broken up by kind of horizontal cracks every now and then. Hmm. But nothing like too insane. But they generally have smooth bark when they're young. So the smooth bark transitions into these long, um, one of my old teachers called it a ski slope, where it looks like wow. there's these long slopes kind of going down, and you can almost just draw your finger down before they break up halfway through. I'm going to Google this. Please, give it a Google. And so you'll first see that this is a big tall tree. Either it's tall with a big stem that then has a giant canopy that comes out at the top of a forest, mm-hmm. or it is a canopy canopy that is broad from the very base and it just gets beyond huge those are the two options you're pretty much going to see now we we're using a lot of adjectives here today mm, yes let's get into some hard numbers Casey. i think it sounds like a good idea alex average height 100 feet tall about max okay 75 80 is where you kind of generally see, see them that's not it's an eastern it's an east coast species alex what do you expect they're doing their best they're trying wow. to get as tall as they can <laughs> but the competition doesn't require them to do anything uh, else our apologies to I, I, are we western centric no we're just realistic about expectations that's fine i think that's okay uh yeah okay so that's not that's not huge but it's I guess I suppose that is that is maybe big for a broadleaf tree. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, I don't want to give a I don't want to give qualifiers. I respect yeah, this tree. But. I mean, they can get up to a, a 140, 150 feet tall. You know, so like the very tallest, the oldest, the biggest, they mm-hmm. can really get up there. But the ones you're going to see just kind of walking around, living your life, eh, about 80, 100 feet. Okay, that's what I would say. All right, so that's the bark, that's the morphology. Yep. Okay, so you know what I want to talk about next. We get we kind of got two hooters at the end here. We do. Well, I don't, I, that sounds like, weird. What kind? Uh, there's owls in this. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> there's a wing restaurant yeah. on the top floor of the street. <laughs> Let's go get wings. <laughs> um, the the acorn and the leaf. Yes. I think I want to end with the acorn. Okay. All right. So let's talk leaf. Let's talk leaf. The leaf uh, of this, of course, it is an oak, as you noted, and it is a red oak. So we've talked about red oaks and black oaks versus their counterparts, the white oaks. Yes. These are broad spectrum uh, kind of generalist terms. One meaning that, uh, that, rather I should say, the white oak group is a subfamily, and they have leaves that have 
uh, nice rounded lobes and their acorns will always get mature in one year. Oh, I didn't know this acorn thing. Ah, yes. Can I I maybe purport where you're going? You may. White oaks, one year acorns. Yes. Are red oaks, two year acorns? Correct. So that's what we're talking about when when we say mast years. Yes. That's... Well, they the it's the mast year, but also mast years are just years where there's a lot of acorns. Sure, a high none. yield. Yeah, it's not necessarily every two years because they take two years to make their acorns because okay. they'll make flowers every single year. So their acorns would just be off by a year. So flower in year zero would have acorn in year two, mm-hmm. but flower in year one will have acorn in year three. Oh. So on and so forth. So every year, there's always going to be some amount of acorns. On a red oak? Yeah, on both of them. I thought you said it took two years. It does, but that doesn't mean that they skip a year in flowering. I got it. Okay. So this is the thing. Can I, give my, can I, can I just, a new, you know how I did give stump up approval? Uh, yes. Anytime I, anytime I miss, uh, just like something goes over my head. <laughs> That's um, when you give a stump I'm gonna approval? I'm going to say, no, I'm going to say, uh, uh, here's, this is kind of an original sound bite by me. I'm going to say, don't. That is original, Alex. Very original. I don't know if I support that. We're going to get sued by someone who may think they have done that first. The Disney Corporation? Yes. Okay, so uh, every two years, our Northern Red Oak is producing a acorn from two years pre- prior, right? Yes, correct. Okay. And that's if it has a big acorn crop. So that's the mast years is that some years they just don't produce any acorns at all and their flowers just don't really go for it. Yeah. So this is uh, kind of two different mm. things. They take two years to mature, but they also have big mast years and low mast years. Okay. So we're not talking about the acorns right now, though. We're talking about the leaves. That's true. Apologies. That's all right. So our leaves on our oak, just as all oaks, you have leaves that are alternately arranged along the stem. They are simple leaves, and they these particular leaves are Quercus ruba leaves. They come out, and they're kind of big, fat leaves mm. with these same lobes that come out. The only difference being, instead of um, rounded lobes, Black oaks and red oaks, which are the same group, same name for the same group. Mm-hmm. Some people call them red oak groups. Some people call them the black oak. Group. Oh, okay. They have bristle tips. So if you look up any of the leaves for Quercus rubra, or if anyone says, oh, that's a red oak, it needs to have tips that go into these fine points. And they call them bristle tips just because they come almost to a point and then they kind of have a little, it looks like a hair, but it's really just like it kind of just goes to the end and then just kind of becomes the very teeny tiniest tip of the edge of this leaf on some of these i'm looking at it almost looks like a little mini serration just on the tip of the lobe just the tiniest little thing yeah Yeah, that's pretty much it right Mm -hmm. so they are generally kind of like fat leaves and this is the thing that sets them apart from say the pin oak or the scarlet oak Mm. those two have very deep sinuses so their lobes are much more pronounced sinuses yes alex a sinus that is the space between oh, the lobes i love it isn't that beautiful that's great whenever i do tree id courses i always make fun of scientists because they name the things in between the things so you can say these have oh, wow. uh, big lobes or they have deep sinuses which is saying ultimately the same thing it's literally six one way half a dozen the yeah other. it's the perfect use of that idiom that was perfect case right. I, I i get it because the, the sinuses are sort of shaped like sinuses in our head yeah they're just like a hole right in between yeah. you know whatever it is in that case your sinuses are like bones i guess i yeah your like, sinuses are this i think the space between bones yes yes correct yeah either way that's the that's what they call them so uh, these, our northern red oak, has fairly shallow lobes, okay. which is important in terms of tree identification. Mm. It also has very dark green foliage, and then on the bottom, the foliage is very muted, lighter green color. Yeah. You're not going to find a whole lot of hair growing also. Pubescence. <clears throat> yes, on the black oak, there will be little teeny tiny hairs that grow on the, like, if you flip the leaf over where the veins uh, reticulate where they branch off. Yeah. You find a little bit of uh, kind of hair, a little pubescence right there. Interesting. Yeah, that's why they call it uh, velutina, that the black oak. So it's velvet. Oak, oh, right? wow. That's all velvetiness to I'm it. learning all sorts of satisfying facts today, all Casey. All right. This is what I'm here for, Alex. This is, why, <laughs> this is why we have this podcast, so I can give you satisfying facts. That's right. And <laughs> if you want to rep this podcast to your friends and family, go to <laughs> arbitrarypod.com slash merch. Wow, that was so beautiful, Alex. Well, well placed. It's my... 
that's my commercial voice. <laughs> yeah, he was really good. I thought I, I would have bought that. Thank you. So the big thing, though, the thing that we always, you know, really want to hear about are the acorns. Yeah, let's get to it. I love the fruit of anything, man. Can I tell you uh, the way that this acorn was described to me years ago by someone in one of my classes mm. somewhere? <laughs> they said it looks like a, a good memory. A, just a, <laughs> thank you, Alex. Um, they said this, and I apologize in advance. It looks like a a chubby Frenchman in a little beret. I adore that. Okay, I'm glad. I'm sorry for all the Frenchmen, everyone out there who could be offended by that. But you look at it, and you just kind of see this little chubby acorn. Like, it's it's not very tall. It's not wider than it is tall, but it's just kind of a, a rotund acorn. And the cap looks like it's barely hanging on. Can I, can I give a, uh, what are those, um, you know, type species? Yeah. I think this is like the type acorn for, for an really? oak. Really? To me, it just is so acorny. I love that. You know it what I is. Mean? It's, it totally is. Like it has the, uh, the, it's just classic. I think that's the perfect way to describe it. It's very classic. So this little cap uh, has, uh, <clears throat> it kind of curls in. It doesn't really go down, covers maybe the top quarter of the acorn. The mm -hmm. acorn is this nice chestnut brown. Like it's a very beautiful acorn. Mm. And they're fairly big. Like they'd be essentially the size of a quarter. I say that because I looked at my fingers and I was like, yeah. It's bigger than a penny. Then I look at my resource, which is the lovely Oregon State landscape plants. Yes. And the picture I'm looking at literally is a quarter next to that. So maybe that's quarter a little bit for of scale. Yeah. What is that? Uh, subliminal messaging. Sure. My brain's yeah. like, this is about the size of a quarter. I don't know how I know that. Here's how. Yeah. This seems obvious. Casey's uh, beautiful minding all over the room. I will say <clears throat> I may be a white oak man. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful with that. Uh, but I do love this leaf and this acorn. You do? I do. Okay. This is I've very got good a fondness know. for it. It's because it's gorgeous. I've They're got just a really gorgeous. For it. Now, the thing also about these leaves is that in the fall, of course, it's called a red oak. They turn a vibrant red mm. color. And m many oaks will turn a red, yellow, or even just brown and just kind of hang on to their leaves. Yeah. Uh, this really does go red and then <sighs> yellow and then drops away. Like they're really gorgeous leaves. Mm. They have a nice little um, kind of, depending on the leaf, the colors will be kind of a mixture between yellow and red. And they'll kind of have this this whole flavor on the entire tree. It's you know, really stunning. You know when you see images? Images of uh, or, or footage, time lapse footage of the Appalachians turning uh, red. Yeah. Uh -huh. are, is this the? Will the northern red oak grow there? Oh yeah, this is, this is the one. Okay. Yeah, especially in the southern Appalachian. Oh, okay. Mountains. Cool. Yeah. So this is this is the oak tree that we're talking about. Wow. This is the northern red oak Quercus rubra. Rubra, of course, meaning red. Have we have we landed on what Quercus means? It, it means wood, right? Uh, or it means tree. Yeah, they, it's the old. It's a, a change in the term. It used to be called Quercitron. Was the name That's of the right. actual oak tree. So Quercus <laughs> is just the Latin, a, kind of a little bit of a change Latin for okay. the oak tree. We've talked before about. Um, and I want to recognize that I am in a particular mood today. Can oh. you tell that I want to talk about a million things? Yes, it's and great. I have a microphone in front of me. Yeah. So <laughs> keep it coming, Alex. I, oh, I, the power. <laughs> We've talked about... Um, <clears throat> why are you just now realizing you've had this power? It's been like two and a half years. I think I just found confidence. <laughs> Uh, we've talked about, uh, I think, uh, dendromorphs. Somebody messaged us about that. Do you remember, remember anamorphs? We've talked yes. about dendromorphs of a person turning into a tree. Yeah. And I think we've talked about transformers in the same way of like a person, mm -hmm. a robot turning into a tree, a yeah. robotic tree. Uh, Quercitron would be oh, a great. It's, yeah, it's a low hanging fruit. Yeah. All right, Casey. Well, today we're talking Northern Red Oak. That is true. And I actually, uh, specifically, am talking about the wood of the Northern Red Oak. How about that? Could we have asked for a more perfect subject? There's no possibility. It's impossible. <laughs> well, what about the wood, Casey? Well, we talked a lot about, um, about wood, generally speaking, about trees, generally speaking. But I wanted to cover it in a very succinct way. But I wanted to talk about how wood is developed and how trees grow and become what they are. And the main reason I wanted to do this, I taught a tree ID course um, not last week, mm. and they were looking at two buds on a maple tree, and I was saying, well, maples are opposite, so their buds would be oppositely arranged. Right. 
someone looked at this tree we're looking at and said, well, what about that? That's not opposite. And how did that happen? And I was like, oh gosh, well, I should explain. As trees grow, they will make adjustments with how they're doing things. Hmm. They're always going to put on opposite buds, but sometimes bud on the left will be in the shade, bud on the right will be in the sun. Oh. So bud on the left will maybe grow a couple leaves and then the tree will be like, nah, not worth it. And then it will shut that down. You've, you've said before that trees are, are adapting to everything all the time. Yes. Which I think is just beautiful in a way. Well, thank you, Alex. I just, I really appreciate how you brought that back up. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. I, I generally forget a lot of the things that I say, so <laughs> you're the best person to bring that up all the time. This is this is the the teacher giving the, the bad student a compliment for staying on task. Yes. I really like how you got this done. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> trying to encourage good behavior. Yeah, because I forgot that I told you that fact. <laughs> no, Alex, thank you. You're right. Yeah. Uh, they do. They're constantly adapting all the time to everything. Which makes ID even trickier, no? It does, yeah. So you got to look at like all, like several different examples along, you know, right. one stem or along the, you know, a whole branch, a whole <clears throat> side tree, the whole tree if you can. Mm. So I wanted to bring that up and talk specifically about how wood does this because wood is generally the thing that everyone kind of forgets about with trees they know that wood exists you see wood on the floor you know you have two right. by fours and things that build your house but then people see a tree that's growing up that's really tall and they think to themselves "Ooh, that's scary that's that that thing could fall at any point but then when you see a large building made of wood <laughs> you don't have that same thought sure interesting so i wanted to kind of well i do bring that together well okay yeah, that's if you have an anxiety disorder you're constantly thinking it, it. you're constantly <laughs> thinking every building every house every bridge is gonna fall casey how about this uh if you make your millions uh through trees uh-huh <clears throat> or woodworking yeah okay and you have this beautiful mansion mm -hmm. right and somebody comes over you be like this is the house that wood built and then they'd be like, oh, interesting. And then you could kind of side eye them and say, aren't they all? <laughs> I don't know how good that joke will be when it comes to time. You know, it's so I specific. It. <laughs> I think it'll work really well in all that right. situation. So the, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is, well, really what I want to do is talk about what wood is first off. Okay. And then draw us a picture of a tree growing from start to finish and how it grows. Fascinating. So I'm going to start by saying- wow. We're talking about wood today. Mm. So red oak, <laughs> yeah, Alex is like, yeah, no, we already covered that. Come on, keep going. <laughs> I thought there was something more. Uh, no, just th that's it. So <clears throat> we're, talking we're talking about, about wood, wood but we're talking about wood in the instance of it being that organic substance that is growing inside of a tree that is holding it up. Sure. Like we're talking about, um, <clears throat> we're talking about like, uh, hold on. I have a, we're talking about the, the, pig's muscles we're not talking about pork yes perfect example right yes so to start with uh we're gonna imagine a little tree is growing up and is a dicot because that's what we're talking about with our northern red oak yes dicot comes up it has its two little cotyledons it's two little uh, embryonic cells or uh, leaves that come out those leaves pop up and you see this little green stem that is the very first stem tissue of a tree beautiful it's technically on its way to becoming wood but it is first <laughs> going to grow up and all the cells are going to be new and fresh and silly and green right they're not really tough you can just snap them with your fingers if you want but give that one year and it will put on a new ring of wood mm. that is when we can really start saying okay here we go now that's wood now this is a tree yes even though it is you know a three inch toothpick of a small little sapling wow that technically counts as a tree okay don't 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 don't, don't get us started with what uh -oh. exactly is a tree we've had that conversation we're gonna let that die or you can just go back and listen you know however many episodes we've talked about that <laughs> oh geez so we're gonna say uh <laughs> if it is a species that becomes a tree right now we're gonna call it this tree mm. so we have this little teeny tiny sapling the first thing that it's doing is it is putting on a new well i guess technically the second thing is putting on a ring of wood yes so it's second year of growing it survived the first year didn't get eaten by a rabbit or something like that it puts on a new little ring now that first central area inside of a tree is called the pith and the yes. pith, you're familiar it's like that very central dot in the yeah in, the, in a tree well you know i i know pith culinarily as like the white 
part of an of an orange, say, yes, or a citrus. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, that sort of stringy, white, fibrous stuff, mm. which I'm assuming is sort of the same. You know, it kind of is, but also isn't. Okay. Because there is, like, you can call something pithy, like there's a description, but a pithy is usually like what's a little catty or a little, like, pointed of a comment. Sure. Um, then there's the pith that is around the orange. That's kind of the stuff that's in between the outside and the actual thing we eat. But it's also growing up the middle, which is what I was thinking. Yes. I think that's the, the place where they come together. Yeah. Is the pith of a tree is that very center of it. So if you cut a tree cross-sectionally and you're looking at that cross-section of a stump mm -hmm. where you can count all the rings, where you go from the outside ring to the very middle, that middle dot, that is our pith. And is that pith wood? It is sometimes. Most of the time it is wood. Okay. Um, occasionally there are trees that have a hollow pith. Um, oh, yeah. I've that, seen that. Yeah. It tends to get filled up um, with extratives, which we'll talk about in a second. Mm, like um, blue 90 and <laughs> yeah. red 45. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> they just inject it in there and call it good. <laughs> no, uh, the, it, is, um, it is generally going to be filled at some point by some, uh, some chemical as the tree starts to grow out. So every year it's putting on this new ring mm -hmm. and there's going to be the pith, which is that very central thing. And then ring one, two, three, four, and five, and six. We call those growth rings. Yes. And essentially a growth ring and wood, generally speaking, is made up of a few things. The first mm. is fiber. Fiber is essentially the, as, as our favorite book, which we actually, I guess I shouldn't say favorite book, our favorite website. Yes. That is also a book. Turned a book. Is the wood database. Um, I pulled a lot of the information we're talking about from this book, which I highly recommend. It's by Eric Meyer. Go to the website. Go to the book. Would you throw that at me? Ooh, Alex. I can like do the it. old days. <laughs> oh, that was a horrible Jeez. throw. I did it lefty. It was, it was pretty bad. Yeah. I'll be <laughs> I'm sorry, Alex. I really regret that. It looked, it looked like it was going to happen faster and further than it did. And then I realized I was throwing a lefty backhand, which, you know, even on my good oh, Frisbee days is sure. a bad throw. It's a bit so. of a failed launch, it but that's a, okay. Yeah, I sorry. caught it. Yeah. Well, we, we have a uh, destruction uh, device in there. So <laughs> when it does fail, the book's just going to explode. But yes, this is a great book. Eric Meyer, M-E-I-E-R. But it's, to me, it's an even better uh, website, yes. wood-database.com. It's so good. It's great. So they, uh, in this book, talk all sorts about what exactly wood is yeah. and all the constituents of it and everything you could ever need to know about wood in particular. Wow. Now, the fiber, the way they describe it in the book, is a essentially the backdrop for everything else. So when you're just looking at a piece of wood, and generally whenever I'm describing these things, imagine you're looking down on a cross section. So cross section would be that the the stump essentially, sure. or the end of a log or a branch or a, um, a piece of wood, something like that. The end grain, is that what, is that what woodworkers call it's exactly it? exactly the term, okay. yeah. So if you read this book, no, but I'm I'm loosely familiar with All some woodworking right. terms. Okay, very well done. So that <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty end cool. grain, you do Alec, come on, don't say you something short. Never whittled a spoon, but I know what end grain is. Yeah. Honestly, that sounds like such a good like uh, uh an attack or something. Like, listen, I never whittled a spoon, but I know what end grain is, oh, okay? Yes, yeah. shit. Oh, damn. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> That's at the presidential debate. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but then one of the other guys like, well, I have whittled a spoon. And then you're like, oh, shit. There's nothing I can do. I, I, I have whittled a spoon. I worked with whittling spoons. And you, sir, are no whittled spoon. So we have the fibers. And the fibers are kind of the strong cellulose material in wood. Okay. And those are the things that are just doing the work. They're essentially just the structure that keeps things together that keeps things moving that keeps the the trunk itself strong yes they are very good in tensile strength now secondarily we have the vessels and i need to say this vessels and pores are what we're talking about mm -hmm. not tracheids you might have to wait approximately two weeks before we're going to talk about that wow tr okay because we're talking about wood on a die cut wood that is on an angiosperm tree which is different than the wood on a conifer or something like that. Okay. We'll talk about that later. Don't Got worry it. about it. All right. So vessels are those big rings. So if you cut a, uh, an oak, like a red oak in half, mm -hmm. and you look down, you'll see these big holes in the wood. Hmm. And those are the vessels. And that's how the tree moves things up and down. So no those kidding. are the, the literal vessels. There are pores.
filters and tubes that take water and nutrients up in the xylem. You're already confusing me here, Casey. How so, Alex? Because I was under the impression for the last three years, Mm -hmm. two years, that xylem and phloem were responsible for transport of goods. That's a great point, Alex. And that they were just just beneath the surface of the bark. Yes. And then there's the wood. But now you're telling me, this is a bombshell. This is. That there are vessels within the wood itself. Correct. That take stuff up and down. Yes. Well, I've been lied to. You have not been. I'm sorry because I'm the one who would have been the liar in this case. Yeah, you lied. And you know what, Alex? I'm going to hold, I'm going I'm to say no. Mm. Let, let me let me try and dig myself out of this hole. Okay. So the xylem and the phloem are the two parts of the vascular cambium just underneath the bark. The phloem is what takes the photosynthate and the sugars produced in the leaves and puts that out to the rest of the, the tree, the roots, the stems, all that. F- flows out. Exactly. Flows out and down is how you think about yeah. it. Then the xylem are the cells that are on the inside, and those are the ones that take the water and nutrients and everything from the ground and move it up. Okay. So the way you can remember that is that the most fun thing to do on a xylophone is go. That's perfect. That's great. Yeah. But you, of course, always go from the low to the high. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So the other thing about this is that xylem is the Greek word for wood. Right. So. The sap wood, which is the wood that we're talking about Mm -hmm. right now in this moment, that has all these vessels in it that are open and they're running things and they're storing water. Okay. They're living cells. Okay. And so the xylem cells, those ones that are made on the inside, those are the freshest. They're moving. They're having a good time. Then as you go back into the older rings, year uh, negative one, year negative two, year negative three. Those are also still living cells. Mm. Just that sapwood, and they're filled with different um, chemicals. Uh, mostly, they're just moving things up and down. So they'll store water, they'll store sugars, and they will help transport those up to the next level. Do older layers of sapwood work less efficiently than younger yes, layers? They precisely. do. Precisely. Wow. They they will die. Yeah. And well, we've we've said before that they retire exactly, and they become yes. heartwood, and they become heartwood, which is like a inert exactly doesn't do any work only living cells will store water or move water yeah and it has and then as those cells die that's when they're filled with those extratives that we were talking about with the pith ah yes that's how they become heartwood precisely alex because they also change color when they become heartwood exactly assuming that's uh, due to the additives exactly yeah the Uh, extra expletives yes the expletives yeah (laughs) every single time that tree curses it has to put one expletive in the bank in the heartwood (laughs) the curse jar of the tree (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) that's such a good way to look at it Hell yeah. So the cursed jar of the tree will then uh, get filled and become way more decay resistant. And that's Ah. what's important. Because now what this tree is doing, so now when we're talking about our little sapling, it grows up from the apical meristem every year. It gets a little bit taller. The branches get a little bit wider. The stem puts on another ring Mm -hmm. every single year. So as it's doing that, all the older stuff, and now our our tree's probably going to have to be 20, 30, 40 years right now, where you start getting those extratives happening in the very middle because only the very middle heartwood starts to die and that's when it starts getting filled with all these extratives. Okay. Ex- extractives are also a term that you, it's the same term, but extratives versus extractives, I don't know where the emphasis mm. should be. Anyway. I like extratives. I do too. That's, it feels to say, right. But. So, where, where, where does that word come from? Why is why? That's a great question. Essentially, the tree is as all this, uh, all these cells die. The uh, things, all the different moisture and water, they call it free water, starts to move out of that wood into the other cells, being extracted, and then it leaves behind certain chemicals. Okay, exactly. So that is how we develop all these parts of the tree. We have the heartwood, the sapwood, the cambium, and the barks on the very outside. Every year a tree grows, it is building up that wood. And you have the fiber in our oak trees and all the rest of our angiosperms. We have these pores or the vessels that are moving things up. 
we also have ray cells, and those are the cells that grow radially out from the middle of the tree mm. and kind of connect these different parts. So the, the latest wood wow. and the earliest wood are connected with these kind of horizontal spoke cells called rays. Oh, yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. If you've looked at any wow. uh, the end grain of any wood that is a hard wood, otherwise known as an angiosperm, that is what you're looking at. Why is this new information to me? Well, because we just haven't covered it, Alex. That's what we're doing today. It's kind of shocking. Yeah. It's one of those things where you could just gloss over it, talk about a thousand different things, and then turn around and realize you missed an exit and be like, oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And honestly, Alex, I, 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 this is both me breaking it to you and me giving you a little bit of a, you know, here you go, kid. <laughs> you just weren't ready, you know? But now, oh, wow. now you're ready. Okay. Now you're ready. I don't know how that's not an insult. but <laughs> <laughs> As our good friend David Yabu used to always ask, is that a compliment or an insult? Yeah, it's hard to tell on that one. <laughs> now, one thing I should note about our uh, northern red oak. Yes. That it has tyloses, which are the little holes throughout the wood, right? That's right. We've talked about tyloses we have. in the context of uh, <clears throat> uh, wine barrels. Yes. Now, uh, well... In, the, in that you want to use, when if you're making wine or like bourbon or whiskey yeah. or whatever. Storing anything in a barrel, really. Yeah, you want to use a white oak. Precisely. Because they have very tight tyloses, yes. which means nothing's going to be leaking out of them. Yeah, because these holes, these pores, they get filled in as the tree ages. Yes. So if you don't have them filled in with these tight tyloses, which are kind of these cells that blow up and become these big balloons that then block these uh, these cells. And of course they do this so that any decay can't just use this nice tubes system to get around the tree. I see. So they block it up. So our... <laughs> it's kind of... I, it's kind of creating a problem and then solving it. I don't know. Yeah, it, all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So the tree's like, well, I don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to fill in all of the holes and just call it good. Yeah, okay. And it becomes structure. So maybe a northern red oak or red oaks in general have more bigger, looser tylo yes, tyloses? Yes, exactly. So they are they will let any amount of thing kind of keep going through. Yeah, yeah. okay. So the this is how a tree develops. And these are all bits and parts that gets put in there. You have parenchyma cells, which are, uh, they store stuff. They're these cells that basically are like closets in the hmm. in the, the space and those are where you know all sorts of stuff uh, like water and nutrients and starches and sugars all kind of stored in the parenchyma cells parenchyma, parenchyma. is a it's kind of a catch-all term a lot of times okay um, but again we're not talking now so particular we could go into wood anatomy forever we're going to leave it just saying they're kind of the closets. Then you kind of have the the hallways, which are these um, long pore cells. You have the ray cells that are kind of like these other hallways that go in the opposite direction to make sure that everything can get, you know, left and right and up and down. I'm imagining the street layout of Paris. Yes. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> if there was another Paris on top and then another one right. and then another one, so on and so forth. An endless Paris. Yes. Now, the other thing about wood, which is really the part that makes me like get really excited in the context of it being in a tree, mm -hmm. is that this is just the basic set of units that the tree is working with. It says every year, I'm going to put on a new ring. I'm going to have all these component parts. They're all going to be reconnected. It's all going to fit together in a really nice, cohesive manner. But the mm. other thing that wood does is it will grow up and it is the thing that responds to everything. Mm. I think about it as infrastructure, Alex. Okay. You go outside onto your street and you have the road and you have a bridge and you have uh, a road construction crew fixing the pothole over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another issue over there. There's another crew's making that happen. Wood and trees are doing that all the time, always. Like what we said, wood trees are always responding to something. Right. The thing that is doing that response is the wood. Mm. Or if anything, if you look at it on a longer timeline, time uh -huh. it is the wood's response growth every year that tells you what the tree's been dealing with. Right. So, for example, as our little sapling is growing up, let's say there's another sapling right next to it. Mm -hmm. That little sapling will be growing up on, let's say, the south side, mm -hmm. which means our north side tree has to grow maybe a little bit taller and quicker, and it will have no 
branches on one side. Right. It's not going to have any branches on one side because there's another tree over there, which means if it puts its leaves out and its branches out, it's going to be shaded out, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So, you have one tree with no branches on the north side, another tree with no branches on the south side, growing right next to each other. The sun in our northern hemisphere is actually coming down kind of on the on the south side, so a south aspect will have more sun than the north aspect. So, our northern tree has to grow a little bit taller to get above the tree on the south. The tree on the south is going to have all of its branches putting out... Uh, is going to have all of its branches growing out on that south side, right? So what you can see if you start to look at the way these trees are developing is they're responding to the pressures and all the different influences and everything that's happening from the other trees, but also from gravity and snow and wind. So one tree is protecting the other tree from wind. Does that make sense? Yes. Then you have gravity. So if one branch is coming way out, and, and Alex, if you uh, if you imagine yourself walking like a zombie. I'd love to. Okay. So you're walking like a zombie. You have your hands straight out. And if someone was to hand you a big bucket of water mm-hmm. and your arms are still straight out, you'll notice, and everyone at home, feel free to play along. <laughs> Grab this big heavy thing. It could be a bunch of books. It could be water. I use water because I'm imagining like a snow load or something. Yeah, that's good. So as you're holding that out like your zombie self, you'll notice your entire body will start to flex in a certain position. You'll lean forward just a little bit. Your back muscles will all of a sudden be like, and they'll be working really hard and the front of your toes will be working really hard. Right. Because everything that you do in your body all has to be transferred down to the ground. Your whole body responds to this thing. Exactly. Same thing with trees. Sure. So as that one tree on the south side is growing bigger branches because it's got all the room in the world, it will start to lean over towards the south. It also has this other tree growing a little bit taller behind it, so it's kind of overtaking it. So you have one tree that's really leaning out, and it has to hold itself up. So how does a tree do that? Wood. It does by wood. Ah, uh, Alex, you're good at this. You know that. <laughs> you oh, I can, oh, I can see a. I can see where a narrative is going. <laughs> I can. I okay. I can smell what you're stepping in here. It would be weird if it wasn't. You know. Yeah. Right. It's actually. <laughs> yeah. I can't even think of this a good thing, thing. I'm introducing yeah. right now. It's actually birds, Alex. <laughs> birds take care of all these things. <laughs> so what happens is this. Um, this growth pattern starts to develop inside the tree. You can't see it because it's all covered with bark. Sure. But that oak tree will start to put more wood on that backside. Just as I was explaining, if you're holding out that bucket of water, all of your back muscles will be the ones that are really flexing to hold you up. Right. They are all in tension. Alex, I have a question. Did you know all of your muscles are only able to pull? Um, I, uh, no, <laughs> nice. I didn't really think about that. I mean, I know that you're, you're giving me a, a fact, but I had to like logify it for myself. It's one of those things. So all of your muscles, every single one only pulls. You don't have a single muscle in your body that pushes, that exerts any kind of push. It all pulls. Okay. So if you are leaning on your toes, your back muscles are activated to hold you up your front muscles like in your stomach and on your chest Uh will be doing very little. They'll probably still be flexing because it's one big unit. Everything kind of works together. But if you were to only lift up buckets of water for your entire life, your front chest will be very minimal. Your back, all those back muscles will be out of this world strong. So when I open a door, obviously the muscles are pulling. Yes. But when I close a door... The the opposite, the yang to those yes. yin muscles are pulling. <laughs> yeah, and now we're back to the yang and the yang. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly. Wait, wait, no, no. Yin, yin and, yang. and yang. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's exactly right. And trees do this same thing. Mm. Specifically, the angiosperms are broadleaf trees. They will be only producing, and I, I shouldn't say only, but they produce mostly this tension wood. So our tree that's on the south side that's leaning out towards the sun, yeah. it's going to be putting on more wood on that tension side, I on see. the north side of that. Okay. The tree that's growing on the other side will be putting wood on the opposite side because it's holding itself up, kind of growing away from this other tree on the opposite side. 
So they will always do it on that tension side. Conifers, which again, we'll talk about in a couple of weeks, they do it on the compression side. Wow. Which is on the opposite side. So the conifers say, whoa, we got to put some wood over here. Let's hold this up. And then right. our broadleaf trees say, whoa, 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 let's pull this up. I mean, talk about a yin and yang, Casey. Yeah, Conifers right? and broadleaves. Beautiful relationship. I love it. So to kind of wrap this all up and kind of give ourselves a, a bit of a, an idea of what this kind of pans out to be. Let's put the cap on this acorn. Let's put the cap on this little adorable little chubby acorn. <laughs> this little Frenchman. <laughs> It is, uh, and I should say, it's only Frenchmen because that's the only people that anyone can ever think of wearing berets of these course. days. So we're sorry. To, oh, know, please. Anyway, all of our French <laughs> listeners are going to be like, how dare you? I wear like, baseball caps like a normal American. <laughs> they actually don't sell baseball caps in France. <laughs> they don't, I've yeah. looked into this. <laughs> nice, okay. Uh, that would be so funny, like in the, the World Baseball Cup or whatever. Yeah. Everyone is wearing <laughs> baseball caps except the French are wearing baseball berets. Well, I think what happens is you can even if you if you live in France and you order one online, yeah. order a baseball cap online. You put it on your head and you go to look in the mirror and, and it has transformed into <laughs> it a beret. Okay, yeah, it's just it's it's a it's it's not lost in translation. It's created in translation. That's right. Okay, good. So um so our oak trees and I guess I should kind of also bring this back to our northern red oak. Yes. Because they get so big, these trees have such complicated canopies on how they're moving and how they're reacting mm. and how they're growing. Mm-hmm. So every year a tree will be putting on new wood wherever anything happens. So as our little red oak is growing up It's growing away from one tree on one side of it, and it is constantly putting on this tension wood to hold itself up. Then, as the the tree grows out, it puts on more and more wood. Then a branch comes out on one side, and it's got to support that branch, so it puts on more tension wood over there. Right. And they get so big and massive that if you actually cut some of those branches in half, the the pith of that branch, the very central point, Mm -hmm. will be way off center. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah, Because it's putting on way more wood on one side than it is the other. Interesting. So trees will do this. They'll grow up, and if they're bending over, um, we in the arboriculture industry use the term a corrected lean or an uncorrected lean. Hmm. A corrected lean is when a tree kind of bends over or is growing phototropically away from something and it is totally leaning, but it has been growing and leaning like that and reinforcing itself every day, every year of its life. So the tree's perfectly capable and able to stand itself up it has corrected its lean okay whereas if it's an uncorrected lean it means the tree is unstable and it you know it's literally about to fall over got it so a tree growing like our northern red oak that gets so big will have a canopy and have wood anatomy that is growing up in every possible way where every time there's a little bit of movement the tree's like well I remember that. And it's going to put on more wood over there. Every time there's a bit of a stress Mm. because there's a lot of weight on the end of this branch, gravity's pulling it down. The tree says, okay, next year, I'm going to put a little bit of wood right there. Right. Clever. And it just adds wood mostly on that tension side, but it'll do it on, you know, hundred or 360 degrees around this thing. It will grow and it will make sure that every bit of that tree is extra protected. So if you watch this tree grow up over time and then you cut it down, you can read all the forces that it was dealing with throughout its entire life. That's honestly one of my favorite parts of wood, Casey, is that... Listen, I'm going to get a little... uh, Come on, Alex. Give us us what you got. Wood really tells a story. (sighs) I mean, it's true, right? It does, It's yeah. literally true. And we haven't even talked about this episode, because we have previously, the issues of uh, the tree getting damaged, right? Because it also then responds to that by putting on new wood in certain places. Right. Wood in certain places. Yeah. It's a nice thought, <laughs> You like huh? that? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I need a little wood right there. A little touch of wood. Yeah. Well, Casey... Oh, well, Casey... That was a whole lot of information. It's a whole lot of information. And I'm sated, I will okay. say. Yeah, are you getting full? A little, <laughs> little too much acorn yeah. uh, flour there? I'm going to barf. You know, as you were as you were talking about that stuff, I had a, I, I did drift for a moment thinking of that meme, sir, this is a Wendy's, of you just like <laughs> in the drive-thru. <laughs> you have brought that up to me before. Yeah, yeah. it's I funny like that to one. me. That's a good one. <laughs> well, hey, Casey, beautiful tale, well told. Oh, wow. And we are now going to ruin it by giving this tree an arbitrary rating. But we have to do so after the break. It's very true. We'll be right back with completely arbitrary. I should say more completely arbitrary. Welcome 
welcome back to Completely Arbitrary. That was our discussion of the Northern Red Oak. It is now time to give this Northern Red Oak a... It's a, a rating between one and ten golden cups Holy of honor. shit. Are you okay? We haven't done this in four weeks because we were on our excellent adventure and I completely forgot what yeah. this part was. Usually you would ask me, at least oh, for the last four weeks, boy. does this change your rating? Right, but we're back to the rating itself. The OG, yeah. I've got time travel sickness. Take me to, take me to Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. That was a good one. All right. Uh, here's how it works. We're going to give some final thoughts and then give this tree a rating of zero to 10 golden cones of honor. Casey, as our resident expert, we'll begin with you. All right. Thank you. I appreciate this. Uh, Alex, I love to look at this tree. I say that as I'm going through the pictures. Yes. Because I just think they're so gorgeous. Casey's scrolling. One of my favorite examples of this tree is... A, it's not even in LA. It's just like four or five of them planted on, I think, 21st, 22nd Avenue, uh, just south of Burnside Street. Okay. There is a row of them. They're massive. And there's a building on the west side that is short. So if you are standing, if you're on Ankney Street and you just rode your bike past 20th and you look up and you say, oh, I should go to the Mad Greek Deli. Isn't it around here somewhere? You'll see these trees as long as you're riding east. Now, if those directions weren't clear, I'm sorry. It's just so specific. <laughs> it's because this is such a great tree. There's a whole grove of the, or a whole like uh, just row of them planted. Yeah. And all of them look like, um, kind of looks like you have one stem and then you take a bunch of straws and you just go pop, 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 <clears throat> and pop all those straws in because the branches are all growing straight up at maybe a 70 or so degree angle. Uh -huh. So there's just these three or four gigantic trees, all of them growing with their hands perfectly up or their branches, I guess. They're not technically hands. Because there's street tree in it? Yeah. And okay. they, it's just how these trees grow. I see. They put these big branches out and up and there's a couple heritage trees that we have in the city that do the same thing except those branches instead of being maybe let's say 10 or 12 inches in diameter, they are like 20 or 30 inches in yeah. diameter. Okay. They are massive trees. That's a big old tree. And you just look at them and I've seen some of these and I'm like, how are you holding yourself up? Like, <laughs> Well, now we know, Casey. Oh, my God. Yeah, and that's why I thought it would be really good to do this tree and talk about the wood because, A, everyone loves oak trees. Oak trees are famous for all sorts of different things. I think they're famous for growing and being these massive, huge, big organisms that constantly, every single year, just don't let themselves fall over. Yeah, that is that is shocking that they can do that. Yeah, and, they, and keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. That's the thing that makes me be like, how did you do that? It's like a whale's heart. Like, how do you pump that much <laughs> yeah. blood? It's like a car's worth of a heart. It's a giant. <laughs> So, um, the Northern Red Oak is one of my favorite trees. It's, it's one that is so common, but like one of those trees where it is so common, but keep planting. Them. Wow. They are, they're just, they're great trees. They, a they rarity. Take, it is. It's a, it's a rare tree. 99% of the time. I wouldn't say that. I would say that for this tree. Sure. They're super tough. They grow really well. They're gorgeous trees they're wonderful to climb so you just can't you just can't go wrong they are a dime a dozen though so they're not unique mm -hmm. but sometimes you just need that car that you're just like hey that is a toyota camry it's gonna just last forever it'll get you there it'll get you there this is the toyota camry of of trees love it except it's like you know the the extra long Hummer sized camera because they're <laughs> giant trees. The Brett Favre special edition. Yeah, exactly. I don't know so if that's a thing, but. they got. I, I was think thinking of. I was thinking of the Eddie Bauer. Oh, the oh like Jeep okay, or something. yeah. But I, I like the idea of Brett Favre having his own like line of Jeeps. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> so that is something that would happen. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he does Levi's or something, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well. I would say for the Northern Red Oak, even though it's not a spectacularly unique special tree, it's one of the most best trees around. Wow. I'm going to give it an 8.4. That's incredible. 8.4. 8 .4, golden Cones of Honor. Golden Cones of Honor. For the Northern Red Oak from Casey Clapp. I feel confident about that. That's great. I feel good. I love to see you give a tree a good rating. Yeah, me too. And this one, yeah, it feels good. It feels good. like Michelin star rating. I'd give it like a, a two. That's really good. Is it really good? I think Michelin stars are like exponentially oh, weighted or something. You know, like logarithmically. So each one's 10 times better than yeah, the last? Yeah, something like that. Like uh, okay. one star is like famously impressive. Okay, gotcha. 
All right. Well, that's that's your, what I would do. Your Michelin stars are your own, just as your cones <laughs> Thank are. Thank you. Yes, yes. I'm gonna start giving them to like uh, restaurants that I just think are really great, <laughs> and see if people will be like, "Oh my gosh." The Burgerville on Hawthorne. <laughs> yeah, five Michelin stars. At least when I went there last <laughs> night at two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you think, Alex? Uh, now, I, I well, wanted to kind of lead in. You, you have experience with this tree. I failed at the beginning. Is what I'm saying. You've seen this tree a hundred times. I'm sure. Yeah. Whether I knew it was the Northern Red Oak exactly. is a different story. Precisely. But I, I guarantee you, well, does the Northern Red Oak is like a green tree, right? Uh, when it's yes. Not, when it's not autuming. Oh, correct. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look, it's autuming. <laughs> wow. Correct. Falling. Um, okay. <laughs> so the Northern Northern Red Oak, I'm, I'm a, I, 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 I have a fondness for mm-hmm. the, the acorns, mm-hmm. the little Frenchmen. In their little caps. Lovely little hat. And I like... uh, I said eating way too much butter. (laughs) How dare you. (laughs) And I like the... um, I like the leaves enough. They're all right for a red oak leaf. Wow. Um, You know, I love a big broadleaf tree. It's Mm. so... They're so stunning and they're so... I guess... W- wonderful mm. you know mm-hmm. like you wonder at them you're just like my god yeah they kind of t- the, uh, this beech tree over here i just every time i see it i'm like wow that's a really big tree yeah like i think big broadleaf trees are more impressive than big conifers you know maybe I, barring yeah. like the coastal uh, or the the coast red, red i think woods. that's a very fair thing because they get so massive right yeah and that's the that's the whole thing where you have to remind yourself they're held up by wood right organically they did it themselves yeah it's pretty cool trees pretty do cool. it for themselves yeah, i agree with you entirely um boy case I'm going to give it a respectable 6.7. Oh, as long as it's respectable. Yeah. I want you to give a tree a disrespectable 6.7. 6.7. 6.75, yeah. Golden Cones of Honor. 6.75. Yeah. You went all the way to that? So yeah. It's officially I three quarters. I wanted to round it out to a nice even fraction. I think that's a very good idea. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's I like it. 6 and 5. It's just like I don't have like the emotional draw, you know? You haven't climbed one. I haven't climbed one, Casey. Okay. All right. Not that I remember anyway. That was our discussion and our review wow. of the Northern Red Oak. It's time for a completely arbitrary Q&A. This is a true Quercus and answer. Wow, it really is, yeah. Case. Yeah. And we've got one from a brand new fungal associate on the Patreon, Anne-Marie. Oh, bonjour, Anne-Marie. Hi, Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie says, hey, new fungal associate here. Mm-hmm. Welcome, Anne-Marie. Mm-hmm. I just recently discovered y'all, and I'm in love. Hey, we love to hear that. I wish we could hang out in real life and talk about trees all day. Okay. I have been taking notes on the episodes I've listened to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Anne-Marie, in parenthetical. Hold on. How good of a note taker are you? And can we hire you? And can we make sure that you're able to scratch out 70, uh, 30% right. of those notes? Yeah. That actually makes me quite nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> People are listening. Are they actually writing these things down? It's fine if you listen and then the air, wa- the, the sound waves just dissipate. But if you like, <laughs> yeah. make a note of these things. As soon as someone says they're listening and remembering, we yeah. panic. That's, that's scary. It's a lot of pressure. And I feel like I desperately need a tree log, similar mm. to a mushroom for- forager's mm-hmm. log. I see for the notes. Yes, Casey. Okay. They have logs, like a log book for all sorts of things. Hikes, birds, national parks, yep. campsites, fish. But no tree log. I can't find one. Oh my god! I'm gonna be forced to make one. What fields would you include in a tree log Ooh. if you were gonna make one? Anne Marie, thank you so much for that question. It was a great question. I love this question, Gase. Yes, I, I love stationary. Right. I will have to say, when you first um, first suggested this, yes, I thought that they were talking about an actual literal log. Yes, and I was like, there's plenty of tree logs out there. They're Every tree has its own log. It comes with it. You got a little bit of pun vertigo. I do. Yes, that's it. Oh, man. It was bound to happen at some point. <laughs> I'll turn around. Um, shoot. That's a really good point. I know the first thing that I think of is the simplest log, which is, everyone, please get your Sibley guide to trees out and sure. flip to the back. Oh. Because he is a bird person, bird people have these logs, and they would write down all the different birds they see, but it's like a checklist. Okay, it's like... like- 
here's the species. Yes. Here's where I saw it. Here's what it was doing when I found it. That's not even on the Sibley guide. It's literally just a little box that you would just do and check. Oh. It's like, yeah, I've seen that tree. Cool. That's it's not what we're talking about. Not a lot of engagement. Exactly. So that now I'm thinking, well, that a tree log would be a really great thing. You'd have to do certainly the size of the tree, the diameter of the tree, Absolutely. the leaves, the fruit, the color of the flowers, the foliage. There's a lot of fields on that log. Yeah, and you know what? I mean... Here's the thing, though, is that all these things could change at any given time. You have to go back to this tree, and maybe you, maybe you should mark the, the season, because you'd say, okay, I, I, yeah. here, here I am walking in fall. I see all these trees. Some have flowers, some don't. So you couldn't just say, you know, at any given point, I'm going to mark all these things, right? I think... I think we condense all of these like uh -huh. what's the fruit what's the flower what's yeah. the all the id components okay. into species ah you id the tree using a different text and then you just write the species mm. well i guess then what are you writing in what the other logging? fields i think you should log um i mean it should be some id characteristics but i think it should also be how you feel i think you should log this book or log the tree um, an emotional tree log exactly yeah Wow. Did you see this tree and you're like, wow, I was stunned. Or did you see this tree and you're like, wow, I saw this cottonwood and I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> like, uh, does it make you angry? I yeah. by like, this horse chestnut. Right? Never. I have been upset while I've like seen hollies where like I would log a holly and be like, this tree really pissed me off. Right. My hands are completely poked. I think this is a really good idea, Casey. Okay. So and this is kind of a spin on the genre, right? So what do you think, Alex? Uh... What should we include? What should be, let's say, maybe, maybe we need like five. Five fields? Yeah. Species. Okay, species is the first. It's kind of a given, right? Yeah, I think so. Location. Location. Like, and you can be as granular as you want. Okay. Um, a longitude and latitude. Yeah. <laughs> Quite granular. <laughs> Bring your, I don't even know what tool you use for that. Uh, a compass? No. <laughs> let's just say compass, yeah. <laughs> uh, you you got to have um, season. That's okay. a good one. Yeah, I think season's important. Um, you got to have, I think I, emotional reaction should be the last one. Okay, so how about uh, number four, we include um, characteristics. Then there you go. we have subcategories. So whatever you can see, mark it down. Yes. So you have colors of the, or you have leaf color. Uh -huh. uh, you have the flower color. Yeah. You have the size of the tree. Uh -huh. And you can just estimate, you know, height and diameter. Sure. Um, At breast height. Exactly. Four and a half feet above ground. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I don't know, maybe health? Maybe aspect? Um, I think we're missing one very important field here. What? Cone rating. Oh, geez. Yeah, certainly we're going to need to have cone rating. On this arbitrary well, field log. That should go down to the bottom after the emotional reaction. Yeah. Because I think you need to have your emotional reaction, then log it. Yes. And say that that's when you give your cone score. It's a very emotive process. I think that sounds like a great, that, that, that sounds thorough. This sounds great. Hey, maybe. let's let's contact a publisher somewhere. Yeah, seriously. Uh, we can also, I think there should be space. Uh, maybe we can have it be, you know, you open it up, left side of the page either left side of the open pages, mm -hmm. that would be this information. On the right side, a place to draw yes. a picture. Yes, amazing. All right, there you go. What else do you need? Of whatever you feel is most emblematic of the tree. Yeah, maybe it's the leaf, maybe mm -hmm. it's the size, maybe it's this habitat, maybe there's a bird in it. Yeah, maybe it's the salamander you found yeah. crawling around its roots. I think it sounds like a great idea. Probably a willow. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Anne-Marie, thank you so much for your brand new fandom patronage we're and very happy to have you question we certainly are and if you want to ask us a question on the podcast join up on the patreon patreon.com slash arbitrary pod that's a-r-b-o-r-t-r-a-r-y pod and join that three dollar a month quercus and alder tier not only do you get to submit questions for the mainline episodes and if we don't get to it on the main line, we'll get to it on a Patreon uh, Q&A. Yeah. But you also support this podcast that, right. you, that you may or may not like. I don't know why you would listen to it if you don't like it. Honestly, I'll take it. You know? The same reason I watch 90 Day Fiance. Yeah, it just pisses you off. Yeah. I hate this show. <laughs> Shut up. I can't hear it. What? Ab above that is the $5 Arboretum tier. You can get two bonus episodes a month and... 
questions on the podcast above mm-hmm. that of course All casey right. alex you also get 15 percent off our store that's right every month you get 15 percent off any purchase however many times you want on our exactly. merch store that's pretty cool forever forever um above that of course is the cone of the month club best club every month we find an artist to draw a species of conifer cone we get mm-hmm. them on stickers we put them in an envelope with a little info card we send them to your physical mailbox yep as always, every envelope guaranteed to be licked by Mr. Casey Clapp. <laughs> Give us a good asthma little. Very good. That's more of a sucking than a licking. How do you lick? Huh. <laughs> and we do that differently, Alex. If people hated the candied walnuts, they're going <laughs> to despise this. Uh, let's just keep practicing until we get our licks right on our microphones. <laughs> In real time. Uh, above that, $15 a month. You get everything we've already said, plus you get two live streams a month, one with Casey and I on a mm-hmm. host of topics, and one with just me playing a tree or nature-themed video game. And of course, above that, at the top of Mount Olympus, That's right. is the generous admission. To, starts at 20 bucks. You can make whatever you want. If you want to go above and beyond to support this podcast, support Casey and I and the work we're doing, we appreciate patrons at any level. We appreciate Fungal Associates at any level. We're happy to have you here. That's exactly right. Casey Clapp. What a bunch of fun, Alex. That was a bunch of wood fun, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. You, you know, I, ha- I have to say, Casey, I, I would do it again. Oh, God. End it. You, you, uh, uh, what, what, what you couldn't see is me stroking my chin. <laughs> yeah, very inquisitively. Yeah. I can see it. All right. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Completely Arbitrary. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Au revoir. Completely Arbitrary is produced by Alex Croson and Casey Clapp. Our artwork is by Jillian Barthold, and our music is by Aves and the Mini Vandals. And you can support the podcast at patreon.com slash arbitrarypod. And find additional readings at completelyarbitrary.com. Thanks for listening. 